So this is kind of, kind of hard because I haven't been writing like prose for, for very long, only about two years. And it's not that I haven't written bad prose in that time. I, I certainly have, but it's not bad in an interesting way. It's just because when you bad comedy isn't interesting, it's just painful. Um, I, <laughs> reminds me, I once did a, a sketch show in Melbourne when I was younger, and it was all right. But one night it was on Anzac Day, and it played to 12 silent people. And I had a revelation that night that stand up, uh, that sketch with no laughter just looks like really bad theatre. <laughs> um, so, Bhakti wanted, uh, thought it was only fair that one of the, the co-directors read because, you know, we've had artists be very brave and bear their early work. You can go to the loo, I'm not going to stop you, I'm not some kind of loo gatekeeper. I'm not a toilet sphinx. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but one thing I do have is, because um, I've been writing sketch for, for a while, and when I was maybe 20, I was doing stand-up around the place, and I was asked by a producer of a sketch show on Channel 10 to do a trial with them, um, and, sorry? Um, and so I had one day where I got to come in and pitch ideas. Um, and I didn't get the job, um, and this might be why. I'll give you the three main ideas that I pitched. So I turned up to this office with, oh, with like a little satchel full of my scripts and, and ideas, and I was really excited. And then I got in there, and I, I, think, I think this is acceptable name dropping because it didn't go well. Um, <laughs> But I walked in there and at the head of the table was Glenn Robbins, who was like my comedy idol when I was growing up, or at least one of them. Um, and so I just completely freaked out. And I'm not blaming my nerves for these ideas not going well, because they are demonstrably bad ideas. Um, but in no particular order, um, the first one, well I guess it was in the order that I pitched them actually, um, the first one was, I thought I'd open with, with a really strong one, and it was the Fantastic Four. <laughs> which was a crime-fighting team comprised of Times New Roman, <laughs> Comic Sans, Windings, and Ariel. And the joke was, <laughs> that it was like an odd couple thing with the Times New Roman and Comic Sans. Times New Roman being the really straight-laced one and Comic Sans being all wacky. And then Windings didn't speak in anything other than gibberish. And at the end of the sketch, Ariel turned bad and became Ariel Black. Um, and that was met with an absolute... Like, not even, like, it was... Fantastic. Um, so that one went really, really badly, and then I thought, okay, well maybe that's too lowbrow, so I went for an idea that I wasn't going to pitch, which, which was, it's pretty self-explanatory, it was just Tim Winton reads the weather. It was just going to be, I don't even know what it was going to be. It's just going to be like a really verbose and depressing weather with Tim Winton. And like, when you pitch that idea and then they ask you, like, I've never been asked this question before when pitching a comedy idea, which is just, why? <laughs> um, and so that, I was, I was really, I was really shitting bricks by that point. Um, but it was okay because I had like my greatest idea in my back pocket and I thought in this in this sketch show that what they really wanted like because when you're writing sketch what you really want is recurring characters because when you have recurring characters <laughs> things just write themselves right like that's why Little Britain works because they just have like six templates and then they plug it into their computer and they write a season like that's that's basically what that is so I knew it was important to come up with a recurring character. I'm just going to get my bit. So my character, this takes a while, um, like to, it doesn't at all actually. 
Um, my character was just called the Ski Pants Ninja. <laughs> Wait for it. The reason that that would be funny is because when you walk in ski pants, <laughs> they go... <laughs> and that would make him a terrible ninja. <laughs> and there was like... Well, I just told you that there was a pause there, right? Where some people had to think and then get it. And the thing about that pause is, it sounds exactly the same as people getting it and not liking it. <laughs> and so when I pitched that, and there was that pause, I was like, no, 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 because <laughs> they'd be loud. And then I was like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> and that was horrible. <laughs> and so, <laughs> I tried to save it by saying, um, well, if you don't like that, then what about an injury with Tic Tacs in his pocket? <laughs> Less successful, but yeah. So, so that is that is my that is my first foray into sort of trying to be a professional comedy writer, and uh, it took me about four years to recover. So it's nice that I can tell you fine people. Uh, thanks very much. I think we should all have another clap for our, all our readers today. Yeah. <laughs> and their angst in front of all you lovely people. Um, well, that, 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 that's about it. Um, but I feel like this is sort of the last official event, really, for the, for the Writers' Festival. So it seems like an appropriate time to clap these guys over here. That's just some code <laughs> So yeah, I, I hope you've all had an amazing time. I'm sure you have. It goes without saying. Okay. And continue to have an amazing time for as long as humanly possible. And come back next year and do it all again. So, thank you for coming and have a good afternoon.